Hey guys, welcome back to my favorite summer movie. A mini series where I talk about movies that have personally changed me and feel the most summer centric. This week we're talking about Wet Hot American Summer, written by the guy who directed The Big Sick along with his writing partner David Wayne. After watching The Big Sick, now whenever I put this movie on, I can't stop but ask myself, how could someone make such a heartfelt movie like this? Are you judging Pakistan's next top model? You know how we have arranged marriage in my culture? But also create something like this. And of course, who can forget the sex, the muggings, the cover-ups, the malaria, the psychotherapy. It's mind-boggling, two films that are so different in tone created by the same mind. But that just stands as a testament to Showalter's creativity, because I have nothing but praise for Wet Hot American Summer. Like I said, I couldn't even tell you what Wet Hot American Summer is about. But I say that for all the right reasons. Wet Hot American Summer chronicles the last day of summer camp at Camp Firewood, and it follows a perspective of the non-too-responsible camp counselors. You know, like any other generic camp movie would. But this is anything but generic. For starters, let me just tell you who's in this movie, and I'm gonna list off my piece of paper because there's just too much to remember. Janine Garofalo, David Hyde Pierce, Molly Shannon, Paul Rudd, Christopher Maloney, Michael Showalter, Michael Ian Black, Ken Marino, Bradley Cooper, Zach Orth, and A.D. Miles. And if you haven't heard at least two of those names, I'm inclined to believe you live under Patrick's Rock. But the crazy thing is, this movie was made in 2001, before a bunch of these stars were even household names. Not to mention that they're playing 16-year-old characters and they all look like they're in their late 20s. Wet Hot American Summer spoofs the many sex comedies geared towards teens in the 70s and 80s by tackling almost every genre. And it succeeds in doing so because of the plethora of characters they have surrounding the camp setting. You've got the awkward nice guy, the hot jerk, the popular girl, the Vietnam War veteran cook, the lying virgin, the drama group, and a talking can of beans. Lie about it. I mean, you clearly said smear mud on my ass. And I'll tell you something. If you want to smear mud on your ass, smear mud on your ass. Beans. And quoting one of my favorite lines, y y you know, the indoor kids. The humor's tame, but it's also deserving of the R rating as well, if that makes any sense. It's a spoof film, but it's much more clever than the majority of the scary movies or the disaster movies or any of that garbage truck on fire being produced. Oh, and did I mention the conspiracy side story where a ripped off metal heap of NASA Skylab is hurtling toward the camp? You know, normal camp stuff. This is the type of movie it is, man. It's weird comedy. So I was actually working at a summer camp the year I saw this. It was 2015 and I was a group leader of a Lego camp. It was an extension of the main camp, but pretty much all we did was sit in an air-conditioned room and play with Legos for eight hours a day. I was this guy, man. I was the head of the indoor kids. I must have found this movie hearing about the TV series because it was the same year that the prequel series came out on Netflix. But I know for a fact that my then girlfriend at the time pushed me to watch it and she couldn't stop quoting it all summer long until the Netflix series came out. And then we both couldn't stop quoting the show. That's the genius of Wet Hot American Summer, that it straddles the lines of subtle comedy and unsubtle comedy. Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, it'd be a great idea if you came by the camp and taught the campers about space. Uh, uh, no, no, I, I, I couldn't. Possibly. Oh, they'd love it. No, no, I, I, I couldn't possibly. But... Oh, it'd be just. Be... I said no. There are jokes that are intended for the audience to pick up immediately that you'll be quoting for weeks after you watch the movie. But then there are jokes that you're not going to pick up the first time around and you're probably honestly going to find it funny if you're under the influence. The movie is a mishmash of scenes and storylines interconnecting with each other from all sides of the camp. Most of which aren't even possible of taking place in a single day, but they do, and damn do I want to be a camp counselor here. I will say this, of course the movie is the originator and deserves to be held on a pedestal of some sorts, but I think I enjoy the Netflix series just a little bit more. With all of the storylines going on in this movie, I think the best possible format are 30 minute episodes so we get more time to spend with these characters. And even though the prequel series is equal parts fan service, it tells its own story on the first day of camp, and we get more exposition to the characters that we didn't get to spend time with in the movie. It's not easy to pull off a multiple genre spoof, yet tell a somewhat cohesive story, but somehow they do it. 
It's a very specific brand of comedy that won't be funny for everyone, but personally for me, I think the cast and crew's self-awareness makes it all the more enjoyable. And Janine Garofalo cracks me up every time with her over-exaggerated expressions. Oh my god! Jesus! No! Oh my god! Jesus! No! Jesus! Jesus! And those are my over-exaggerated bad expressions. God! Besides actually working at a summer camp, when I watched this movie, I'll never forget showing this to my friends as well. We took a beach vacation at my buddy's place, just partying all weekend, but in our downtime we watched Andy Samberg's Seven Days of Hell special, which is also hysterical, it's very similar humor. And at the same time, the TV show was released that same weekend, so most of my friends actually saw the show before the movie. And once we watched the first episode, we finished all eight in one sitting. It was just so weird and so funny for us. I can't do this movie or show justice just by talking about it, but hopefully you got a sense of what it's all about. I'm just hopeful that I convince you to at least give it a try because it's well worth your time and it's best watched with friends. My current girlfriend and I have watched both the show and the TV show multiple times and we're both really excited to watch the 10 year reunion special when it comes out. It's up there at the level of The Office for us, actually. If we can't find anything to watch, we default to this one because of the security. Because we know we'll experience nothing but joy for the next 30 minutes or an hour. But guys, my question to you is, if you've seen Wet Hot American Summer, who is your favorite character or what's your favorite storyline? There's so many to choose from and I constantly find myself going back and forth between characters, but I think personally mine is Coop. He's just so awkward and shy and I love him so much. But even if you've seen the movie five times, I guarantee you will find something new and funny and random that you weren't able to pick up on before. In my last viewing, I didn't even realize that Joe Lotrulio had a stunt double on the motorcycle and blatant shots sometimes in the movie, and that just cracked me up. This is where inspiring filmmaking comes from, upon new discoveries with each replay. But as always, I'm Rob of Rob Duda Reviews, and if you've enjoyed the content, feel free to like the video and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. And guys, I'll see you in the next one.